Hey guys, Dark Skeleton here, and today I'm going to show you one of the arena matches I was playing earlier today that really demonstrates the importance of early game in arena. Now, this was a game that would have brought me up to 8 wins where I could have gotten a sweet golden card, uh, but I actually lost it going 7-3 and three in this arena run. And as you can see, my opening hand is not really that strong early game. You would think Unstable Ghoul would be pretty good at suppressing enemy uh, aggression, but I actually find that really only works that well if they play a lot of one drops, because if they're playing two drops or three drops, then those things tend to just trade with Unstable Ghoul outright. So my only play here really is to play the Unstable Ghoul, uh, because obviously playing a dude would be ridiculous. He plays a pint-sized summoner, which actually becomes a huge problem for me. Now, this priest is very smart about what he does with the pint-sized summoner here. He knows that if he does not attack my ghoul, that I cannot kill that pint-sized summoner on my own because I can't get the explosive effect. So all he does is brings out a Dark Cultist, one of the best priest cards in the early game and great for board tempo, very strong in arena. Of course, I have no other plays, so the only thing I can do is play a 1-1 dude, which is actually going to backfire for me because this unstable ghoul is just going to die. Now I'm thinking, okay, he'll trade the uh, Dark Cultist into my unstable ghoul, which is true, he will run it in, but he will heal his guy first, which means he's going to be left with a 2-1 pint-sized summoner and a 3-3 three, uh, three, three Dark Cultist on the field. Now I'm thinking here, oh actually 3-2 Dark Cultist, uh, which means that they're both in consecration range. However, he is incredibly genius or just did that because he had one extra mana. Uh, he brings his pint sized up to a 2-3, so I can't consecration his field, because otherwise that would just make his pint sized a 2-4. Uh, this puts me in a very, very screwed position, because he has a dark cultist on the field, I have nothing, and then on top of that, he puts it behind a Tazdingo. I still can't consecration, because if I consecration, that Tazdingo's gonna go up to a 3-6. So the only thing I really have to do is, okay, I'll play my Oasis Snapjaw. Now, because I screwed myself over by having such a bad early game, I was forced to play a minion I didn't want to, and then BAM! The priest plays a Kodo, getting the most value of Kodos of all time, and at this point, the game has completely spiraled out of control. I have nothing on the board, he has a Dark Cultist that threatens to buff any of his minions, and I'm already down to 19 HP. Now all he has to do is flood the board with more minions, including, of all things, a bloody Frostwolf Warlord, and I'm just out of this game completely. I might have some late game cards in my hand, but it doesn't matter because my two drops were so terrible, I didn't have anything to play on turn one, I didn't really have anything good to play on turn two, and then he just ruins me with the Dark Cultist. And this just shows you how important the early game and getting good two drops is in arena mode. You might be able to have a great late game, but then you're really susceptible to early game board control decks. If this game demonstrates anything to me as an arena player, it's how important it is to have a deck which has the tempo potential to even bring you into a later game in the first place. If you let a arena board spiral out of control, then you are very likely to get screwed just as hard as I did right here. Given it was a lucky Kodo, he still had a much better early game, much better cards, much better plays.